Hi guys, Jenny with On Fire Fit and welcome to another episode of Choose My Shoes. Today we are talking about the shape of your heart, <laughs> but first let's look at the shoes. Do you recognize why I picked out red shoes for my little metaphor here? We were talking about hearts and you will see why it's going to be my little lesson for today. <laughs> so I have some of my red heels. I actually didn't bring all the red heels out, but this represents four types of hearts. So I will show you these up close later, trying them on, and we will talk about the shape of your heart. I may have talked about this before and honestly don't actually remember. And rather than just going back through all of my old videos, I thought, does it matter? Like I'm the nine times girl. I need a message to keep coming back to me over and over. <laughs> so even if I talked about it before, I'm like, it doesn't matter because I always need it myself. And I always talk about things that apply to me. So maybe from an outsider's standpoint that hasn't been around for a while, I could sound like I am up here looking down at people and telling you, do what I do because I'm so smart. And it's actually the complete opposite of that. I don't have it all figured out. I learn from all different kinds of people about different things that help improve me and my life. Um, so I only talk about things that I am going through or I have considered for myself and how I'm applying those things to my own life. So I would never try to stand up in like judgment or looking down on people because I know my own struggles. Some of you know some of my struggles and I fa I'm fairly open book about a lot of stuff, but you know, we all know that we all go through stuff and I would never um, try to say, I've got this all figured out, so you should just follow me. My best piece of advice is to follow the truth, which I believe that this is what we're going to be talking about. Follow the truth and then talk to people that have wisdom Surround yourself with people that are also trying to grow and that are willing to humble themselves and admit the things that they don't know or that they struggle with and take some of it and consider it. Don't accept everything that's just told to you, but allow it at least to come into your perspective so that you can think about it, even if it goes against your normal way of thinking. Because I think that when we resist um, growth, I was talking to a friend about this, but one of the easiest things to do when you're confronted with something that maybe your gut instinct tells you, I need to pay attention to this, or there's some truth, we have a choice. We either go through the pain of addressing it, facing it, dealing with it, or we run the other way by doing a number of things. And for me, a quick and easy way to run away is to go on my phone and do busy stuff, respond to emails, respond to texts, um, scroll social media, um, some people go and eat, some people, I don't know, drink, whatever the case might be. So we always have a choice how we want to take in information and whether 
we let it um, help us grow or we run away from it. And I try very hard to take kind of like a, a backup approach where if I'm feeling something like inside that doesn't feel right to me, don't react. <laughs> Try to almost hover above yourself and look at it from a different perspective so that your emotions don't trap you because that's a very easy thing to do. When your emotions kind of get you all tied up, you oftentimes run from that. So I try to like hover and then let myself feel whatever I'm feeling, but also I don't need to react right away. I was talking to um, this friend and I was saying that I felt foolish in this one situation. And my reaction was to like kind of shut down and get away from the situation. And then I thought, you know, there's a reason you're feeling this way that you shouldn't feel foolish, but you do. But why do you feel that way? Don't run from this feeling. Just let it sit with you and try to give it some time. And rather than just react, I did. And it's partly because I kind of did that like hovering above myself where it was like, um, it's okay to feel that way and it's okay to have a reaction that maybe is not exactly the best or maybe it's not even accurate, but that's okay. Allow it and let the feeling, sometimes that feeling will just kind of come and go and sometimes the feeling is there to help you grow. And so I realized that it had to do with ego I didn't want to feel like I was maybe needing to change something or do something a little bit differently. And my ego was kind of rearing up. And that I realized was the issue. And so I said, you know what? I don't need to react. That's ego. And I can just be humble and say, yep, it felt foolish because maybe I need to make a few changes and that's okay. I'm not going to be perfect. I am human. <laughs> we all can have tweaks and ch behavior changes. So the reason this leads into this topic is because I think that we all have to kind of come at heart issues in maybe a gentle way with ourselves because sometimes our first reaction would be like, oh, that's not me. And yet maybe it is and it's okay. Um, let's just get into it and maybe it'll make more sense too. So I was reading this today and it's, it's a metaphor. And then I'm gonna read to you a little bit about what the metaphor actually means. There was a farmer who went to sow seeds. As he cast his seeds, some of it fell along the beaten path, and soon the birds came and ate it. Other seeds fell onto gravel with no topsoil, and the seeds quickly sprouted since the soil had no depth. But when the days grew hot, the sprouts were scorched and withered because they had insufficient roots. Other seeds fell among the thorns, and so when the seeds sprouted, so did the thorns, crowding out the young plants so that they could produce no grain. But some of the seeds fell onto good, rich soil that kept producing a good harvest. Some yielded 30, some 60, and some even 100 times as much as was planted. If you understand this, then you need to respond. Hmm. And let's think about this. So when I grew up, I heard this story and I always was taught or thought that it had to do with people that either believed the Bible or didn't believe it. 
but I had heard this recently and I think that this perspective is actually even more applicable or true. Jesus is instructing us to apply this to us in particular, no matter who you are, no matter what you believe. There's four kinds of soil which represent four kinds of hearts. And now I'm very apprehensive to assign a certain heart to one of these shoes because someone very near and dear to me sent one of these. <laughs> And then some are from my husband. So I don't want to assign a negative heart to any of them, <laughs> but they are, they're just going to represent anyway. So, okay, four kinds of hearts. Hard hearts, hollow hearts, half hearts, and whole hearts. So with that first soil that we heard about, that's the activity of Satan. There, it, the, the truth, the words come, and they're just snapped away instantly. The second is that of the flesh. And the flesh, of course, is the other side of us that kind of resists all the, the good of the spirit and tends to sometimes overwhelm us and cause us to do things that feel good in the moment but in the long run, don't work out for us. Third is that of the world. And that was, I believe, was that the um, thorns. So you might hear this, but then the world, with all the different junk going on, comes in and just chokes it out of you because it can be overwhelming, right? The thorns can be so grabbing and taking over. Um, the, and then the last, of course, is falling on good soil. So bearing fruit is never a problem with the seed, but it's with the soil that it falls upon. And so the question is, what kind of heart do you have? Are, do you have the kind of heart that is open and willing? It's the good soil, and you're going to let the words go down into you and take root. And when the storms of life come, you're going to have that strength underneath the soil that's going to hold you tight. Or are you going to let the world become such a distraction and so defeating that you let it choke out all of that goodness? Or are you going to let Satan and all of his sneaky ways of trying to bring you down. He's the father of lies. He will lure you in, telling you it's no big deal, and everybody does it. And then as soon as you do it, he will say, you're such a rotten person. What's wrong with you? It is unbelievable how often I've experienced that, and I know other people have. I think that if we can start to recognize the different threats to that depth of roots that we're hoping for, if we can kind of recognize the things that are gonna come against us, maybe we can have a little more awareness of how to not allow it and how to keep a tender heart to truth and a lot of that to me, for me in particular, has to do with humility and humbling myself before God and saying, totally blew it and give me wisdom and understanding so that I don't fall for those stupid things again. Or what can I do that will help create kind of a boundary or a barrier that will stop me from having all of that influence. And I, for me, I get a lot of very practical thoughts that I believe come from the spirit that tell me how to go about doing that. And it'll probably be different for you. Everybody is different, but a lot of it has to do with 
keeping your environment in such a way that you are allowing more of the good words to sink in and the less of what all of this other flesh, junk, worldly, everything come in and choke out the good. It says, if you understand this, then you need to respond. And so we can't just run away. We can't hide from it. We can't say, I don't, I can't deal with this because it's uncomfortable. We have to decide, okay, I heard this. Now I'm going to do the hard thing. I am going to respond. And, you know, a lot of this is not going to be instantaneous. It has to do with a decision to just continually take one step forward in the right direction each day. It doesn't have to be all at once, and it doesn't have to be like you know the whole path. But we all know what our triggers are. We all know what those things are that, that kind of cause the, the condition of our hearts not to be as fertile. So think about that. I would say bring it before God and just ask him, what can I do that would help me have a whole heart? I don't want a half a heart. I don't want a hollow heart. I don't want to have a heart that is not fully ready for all the good that you have in mind for me. And I believe he will show you. So let's say a prayer. I'm going to show you the heels and we're going to talk a little bit more about those hearts. <laughs> and then I'll take a walk in them too. Father God, you are so good. Thank you for speaking to us in parables and metaphors. And you know how much I love <laughs> parables and metaphors and that I get to use shoes to do that. So thank you, Lord, for that. And I just pray, Father God, that you would just work in each of our hearts in such a way that we would have whole hearts for your truth and for wisdom and discernment. Help us to not fall for the attempts of the enemy to pull us off track and the world and our flesh and everything. Help us just to seek you with whole hearts because we know that you love us with your whole heart so i praise you for each and every one that's here in jesus name amen okay we're gonna take a closer look i actually realized i was going to put on nylons because i think it'll look good with some of these shoes so bear with me i will be right back Okay, and my Patreon people, I'm going to do this with and without hosiery because I'm not sure which looks better. And, you know, I always do the extended content. Plus, I will also do the camera facing the other way because I think sometimes the different views are good. Okay, so you're going to have to tell me, choose my shoes. Which one do you think is whole heart? Which one do you think is half-hearted? <laughs> and uh, let's see, what else do we have? Hollow heart. Which one do you think is a hollow heart? And what was the other one? Hard. Whole, half, hollow, and hard. <laughs> so I was going to assign, sorry, you know what? We did um, some construction and I'm realizing that I got some dust on these. Um, I was going to assign, but I think choose your shoes today is going to be about you telling me which kind of heart each of these are. So let's give you, I'll give you a number and I will give you a brand. So you tell me this is number one. And I think it's, is this the shuts? This is shuts, number one. <laughs> okay, that's number one. 
And then some of these, you may or may not think nylons go with it, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Cause it does have a reinforced toe. So I don't know for certain what we think about that. I don't think you can really tell in these, but These have a little zipper. Now, part of your clues for how you pick out which heart each of these is, I hope I didn't snag these nylons, no. Um, you may determine the type of heart based on characteristics of it. So, you know, we have an open side here. It ties, that's that one. This one, has kind of like it's almost like netting so it's not exactly closed here it's more of like a netting so does that tell you anything for a metaphor <laughs> okay all right oh I always forget these don't actually tie they just zip up the back. I just want to be careful that I don't catch the nylons in the zipper. All right, next. Oh, did I tell you what the brown was? That was number two, and this is Nina. All right, so now we are on to Charlotte Russe, and this is number three. A little twisted there. I know it's sometimes it takes a little bit to buckle. And then you have no idea. The video editing, I know when you watch finished products of things, it doesn't seem like it takes that much time, but I'm doing all the camera angles and then the on and off with the shoe, the nylons, then the runway, and then putting them on one at a time and then taking them off one. <laughs> oh. It's a job, but what a fun job, right? Okay, so that's the Charlotte Russe. Call is coming in, but I don't think I really need to take it. So I was looking at my camera there. I mean, my phone. All right, so that is number three. And here is White House Black Market. And it's another zipper one. And it has the little open portion here. These, I'm just giving you all the clues that make me choose things the way that I do. <coughs> oh gosh, the zipper won't work. And I'm trying really hard not to get the nylons caught in there and tear them. These are very nice ones. My husband got me these Wolford nylons. Okay, there we go. Don't catch, don't catch, don't catch. Okay. Number four, the White House Black Market. Okay. I will take you for a little runway, and if you're Patreon, you hang on a minute, 
I'm coming back with a different angle. And if you're not on my Patreon, you can look in the comment section for the link. And here is my runway in front of my house. And yeah, so it was a cold day today and I'm in short sleeves. So this will be relatively quick. I did do a closer up version for Patreon as well. And I also was laughing because my new and next door neighbor came home in his truck and you may hear some rumbling sounds in the background because of that, but I am pretty sure I was a spectacle. Like, what is this lady doing? <laughs> well, what is this new neighbor all about? So anyway, it's okay. They'll get used to it. <laughs> so how are you doing today? Are you having a good day? I am doing my voiceover with a nice warm blanket over my lap after being outside in the cold. Hopefully you guys are having nice weather wherever you are. I know my one friend was talking about shoveling snow, so I do not have any reason to complain. <laughs> but anyway, I hope that you're having a beautiful day. Okay, so you need to comment which shoe goes with which heart, and then why don't you chime in on the shape of your heart? All right, have an on-fire day. I'll see you soon.